Hello, everybody, and welcome to week 16 of the 2018 NFL season. I'm your host, Cody P, known as the Blind Canadian Cat. I say meow, and we roll intros like we have always done in the past. For the most part. Whatever. We're going to make this a quick episode because time is money and I have neither. So let's get into it. Last week, um, middle of the pack, 9-7, 9-7, straight up, and against the spread. Bringing my total to 133, 87, and 2, straight up. And 98, 115, and 9 against the spread. Meaning, if I'm going to break even, it's going to be, have to be nearly perfect. And straight up, the goal is to keep under 100 losses. I think we'll be able to do that just fine. As far as going out into the playoffs, I don't know, but we shall see. Two weeks left of the regular season, and boy, are we getting tight. Things are getting close, and things are getting tricky. Let's get into the game, shall we? The first game I am going to look at has the Los Angeles Chargers heading, or er, they're hosting, rather, the Baltimore Ravens, where the Chargers are currently four point favorites at home. And after doing the math and doing what is realistically possible, due to the Patriots losing to Pittsburgh, the Ravens need to win out. Or hope to God that both Indianapolis and Tennessee lose this next week's game. Or high probability of them not making the playoffs. Um, if they went out, regardless of what happens, um, they'll either win the division or at least hold up over the tiebreakers. Since Indianapolis and Tennessee are both playing each other week 17, one of those teams is going to win 10 games if they both win. Which I'm going to predict they both do win. And Pittsburgh has that half game lead over, and they're going to end up playing the Bengals Week 17 while the Ravens play the Browns Week 17, and the Bengals are playing with pretty much second stringers at this point. So it's the easy win for Pittsburgh. So this is essentially a must-win game for the Ravens, and the Chargers, they're kind of just nonchalant whatever. Um, they have a chance to steal the one seed and the division, but it's going to take a lot of work and hoping that Seattle can knock off Kansas City on the Sunday night game, which is highly plausible. I guess we'll see. It should be a good game. Glad I got work off for that. <laughs> but um, the Chargers, uh, I, let's just face it, Chargers are a good team. Chargers are one of the better teams in the NFL, and something about them just kind of just echoes. Like, something in your gut feeling says that this team might be Super Bowl bound. I don't know, because New England has looked like a shell of themselves and can't win on the road. And because of that loss, they'll not, they probably won't get a bye. Um, Kansas City, do you really trust them in the playoffs? Do you trust the first your quarterback in the playoffs? It's tricky, and he hasn't looked that good lately. I mean, he's getting points, but he's not looked as impressive to me as he was like at the beginning of the year. And then Houston, again, another young QB. Baltimore, if they sneak in, young QB. Indy has to go on the road every game. Tennessee will have to go on the road every game. Chargers, since they don't really have home field because the Stuff Hub Center is kind of a joke when it comes to home field, it, it, I feel like the Chargers could win any, either way. And that last Thursday win proved on a short week, proved that the Chargers can go on the road and win games. But I gotta be real. I'm praying for a close game. I'm praying for the Ravens win, but I just don't see it happening. Chargers are just too good of a team, and Lamar Jackson's going to have fits. Because he's not going to be able to just run the ball whenever he wants. Take the Chargers and lay the points. Second game we're going to look at has the Green Bay Packers going to New York, where the Jets are currently three-point dogs at home. I hope I'm right about that. Um, sorry, I'm just doing one more check. Uh, yes, I'm correct. Jets are three-point dogs at home. Well, the Green Bay Packers have officially gone from bad to even worse. And now they have been eliminated from the playoffs. And that makes me a anti-Aaron Rodgers fan base person happy. Because I don't have to deal with Aaron Rodgers in the playoffs. But I wish I had my own football podcast so I could just talk about these sports without having to tell you games. But whatever. Because I can get into the reasons why I dislike Aaron Rodgers and his fan base and whatever. <laughs> Moving on. Um... Packers have yet to win a road game. This is their final road game, and they have not. They've been zero and seven on all road games. So you would think chances are that the Jets have a possibility of winning this game, 
And a lot of people I talk to are taking the Jets to win this game. But for me, it, 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 I'm, I'm also tired of, when it comes to the Packers, that Aaron Rodgers is the only good one. Devontae Adams is a top 10 receiver. And my books, from the way he's performed this year, he deserves to be, maybe not, to, maybe not top 5, but he deserves to be in the conversation for one of the best receivers in the game. So I don't want to hear it. Jimmy Graham's still a top 10 tight end, regardless of how old he is or whatever's going on around the league. Jimmy Graham's top 10. So, I don't want to hear excuses that Aaron Rodgers doesn't have a team. And they have a defense. They do have a good defense. So, you, Aaron Rodgers, it's you. I mean, not you directly, but you indirectly. Without a good, again, my, my main point with Aaron, problem with Aaron Rodgers is the way people talk about him, you'd think he could just do it all. He legit is the LeBron James of the NFL. Do it all. Carry the team. LeBron went to eight straight finals. And then again, yes, basketball is different from football, so you can't really carry a team. But come on, Aaron Rodgers. He's been to several NFC championships with teams who, I'd argue, are worse than the ones he got now. So figure it out. Hell, he won three straight road games. You were a sixth seed when you won your Super Bowl. Figure it out. Anywho, I just... I don't trust the Jets. I don't trust the Jets, and I think the Packers go out with a little bit of a bang. And the next game after this is a home game, so I think they go out finally, get a two-game win streak, make it look like an even season, even Steven season. And anyway, take the Packers and lay the three you're getting. And the final game we're going to look at is going to be when the Texans travel to Philadelphia. Yes. They're traveling to Philadelphia. The Eagles are one and a half point favorites at home. This game means a lot to both teams. Philadelphia, praying for a miracle Dallas loses out. And can sneak in to steal the division under the new controls of Nick Foles at quarterback. Or they can hope that Minnesota shoots themselves in the legs. Which they probably will. Um, in one of these next two games. I actually don't know the math off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure if Minnesota loses one more game or something like that, then they could probably sneak it. The Philadelphia could sneak in, but I don't know off the top of my head. But either who, Philadelphia is still alive, but they need miracles to happen. And Houston, thanks to the Patriots losing, now have the two seed, and as long as they win out, um, they're going to keep a bye, which could be proved to be very crucial for a young Houston team into the playoffs, who have not gone very far over their years. Then again... Having quarterbacks like Matt Schaub and all of them, or Brock Osweiler, they're not going to get you far in the playoffs anyway. And Brock Osweiler got lucky against Connor Cook because Derek Carr went down with an injury. But outside of that, it's give or take. What happened? This game, this is a game I really wish I want to watch. I'm probably going to watch it through the red zone, but this should be an exciting game. And when it comes to the end of it, I think you will ask who is more hungry for this game because this game is crucial to both of them. And to me, I think it's Houston. Houston now knowing that they could potentially lock up a bye if they win out against Philadelphia. And then I think they're hosting Jacksonville Week 17. This game's a gimme. The Houston's hungry, and they can get those two wins easily and lock up a bye. So I think Houston's hungry. I think they are overall a better team than Philadelphia. It's a small price to pay, and I think Houston actually steals this win in Philadelphia. Take the Texans plus one and a half. Alright, those are your three games. I slide over here, both the decorative Christmas tree in the background, as I give you the picks going down the list. This game, Tennessee game, I was contemplating whether or not I wanted to give, uh, make, have Washington think it close, make it close, whatever, but I have no faith in Washington. They get lucky in Jacksonville because Jacksonville's offense is MIA, non existent, whatever. Um, Falcons win, Panthers shutting down Cam Newton for the rest of the season, meaning the Panthers are going to be MIA. Uh, Patriots will destroy the Bills, as they usually do, because they're at home, and the Patriots are good at home, and Tom Brady needs a redemption game after losing the last two. Browns sweep the Bengals, because the Bengals suck, and the Browns are good, and they're probably going to be a really good team next year, which scares me. Dolphins take care of the Jags. Dolphins still fighting for a playoff spot, and they think they might have a chance, so taking an easy Jags team, whatever. Vikings over the Lions. Lions keep it close, though, because Kirk Cousins is bound to have another one or a, a screw-up game, and their coaching staff is bound to forget that they have a decent running back tandem in the backfield. What can you do? 
guards keep it close because they're gonna play for their coach and you know Rams have been shooting themselves in the foot too much that they probably don't know what to do. But I gotta be real. As a fan as a David Johnson fan. Not necessarily an Arizona fan, but a David Johnson fan. It it hurts to see this team. Josh Rosen's not good. Or at least not yet. It could be coaching or it could be the pieces around him. I don't know what it could be. But Josh Rosen looks god awful right now. He looks like the worst quarterback of the first round picks. He really does. But the Rams have been shooting themselves in the feet lately. So I think Arizona makes it a closer game, but the Rams will win easily. Uh, Saints get a win over the Steelers to help them lock up the number one seed, because this win should do it. Chiefs eke out a win against Seattle, but I think with only a two and a half point spread, you can get away with it. And the Broncos take care of the Raiders, even though the Raiders could easily win this game. Doesn't matter, both teams are eliminated, no one cares, that's why I got, I switched the schedules. I had Sunday, I had to work Sunday, and then work, and then Monday off, so I had to switch. So I can get Sunday off and work Monday, because I don't care about this game at all. There is that on Fantasy. Um, whoo! I beat Teddy to advance to the championship round again, so... This will be my second year participating in, in the championship league. My first year, I beat Matthias. My second year, I was knocked out in the first round. By the eventual champion, Micah, who also beat Christopher. So now Micah will be playing. So now both the people in our championship in the League of Assholes are champions. So we'll be see we're gonna see a two-time champion. But will it be a back-to-back -back one, or will Cody win two of the last three? Oh, this will be exciting. And as for the bottom of the pack, um, Keith beat Sean. Sean's one of those weird teams this season who seems to do good against good teams and bad against bad. I don't know. Whatever. Please down in the comments and whatever. I guess I can't really judge him at the players, but you know what I mean. So, Sean will be battling Zane, who lost to Nathan for the Sacco Bowl. And Keith and Nathan will be playing for the fifth spot. And Teddy will battle Chris for third. Because these things matter. And into the Lottery League. Wow! Murat beat me. Murat has upset two teams now, beating both Carter and then myself. Damn. And I'll be playing Brian, who eked out a win against that. Very close game, like less than two points, especially in a PPR league, where these things matter. That's something. So me and Sat will be playing for third place, presumably. And then, since it's a 12-man league, and I don't understand the rest of the crap, I'll try to figure it out by the end of this week, because all the playoffs should be done, and we should be able to focus on actual playoffs for the Super Bowl champions, whoever that may be. Been a lot of close games, and a lot of interesting games. Oh, and that's it for me. Um, thank you all for watching. Make sure you subscribe down to the link below. Like the video. Because I know. Well, I don't know. But I appreciate all, all the support from people. Feel free to follow me on my social media. Twitter, I'm constantly talking about football. Whether it's legitimate or illegitimate. I'm always talking. I always feel the need to rant or defend the Ravens or insult the Packers and Patriots. Whatever. I always feel the need to do that. So feel free to follow me and tell me why I'm right or wrong. Make sure you join us on the Football NFL YouTube Prognosticators Facebook page where you can see us all talking about dumb stuff or smart stuff or you can debate whatever you want. We're all football people. We all like football. And feel free to ask me. I really want to do a football podcast, but I have no idea who I want to do it with or if anyone wants to do it, nor do I have the time right now, to be honest. But I'd love to do a football podcast one of these days where I can just talk about what happened in the last week's game and what I think will happen this week's time. I don't know. If you're interested in that, or if you're interested in just listening to it, let me know down in the comment section below. Or again, hit me up on social media. Thank you all for watching. I am the Cody P. Known as the TVCC. This is the babes. The world's best babes. And we'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye. Good job, babes.